Yeah, you get your balls to the wall, man, but wait. This is confusing. The thing says, Freaker's Ball, and, 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 and you're playing the balls to the wall music. What's up? <laughs> Well, uh, let, me, let me tell you, um, last night I was talking to the Moose Girl there in the chat room, and she said to me, she said to me, I might not be here tomorrow night. And I said, okay. <laughs> so I don't really expect her to be here, although I haven't heard anything from her uh, since then. Maybe she t took what she said to me as, I won't be here tomorrow night. Although she only said, I might not be. So, um, <laughs> since I don't actually expect her, but I still put up the, the, the Freaker's uh, information up on the thing for the show now. So, anyway, welcome to the Freaker's Balls to the Wall show. Yes, indeed, right here live on RealLibertyMedia.com on this Friday night, October 18, 2019. Yes, indeed, it is that time once again. Yep, Friday, Friday, Friday. Hopefully you're all ready to have some good times here, listening to some jams and other such wonderful stuff such as that. Uh, anyway, yeah, um, I also noticed uh, earlier uh, Mr. Cowboy Tech had asked the question, Hey, is anybody else having problems with the real liberty.org uh, server? Um, the, the problem is, yes, uh, Cowboy Tech, if, you're, if you are tuned in and listening, and anybody else that's tuned in and listening that may be a member of the RealLiberty.org website, uh, yeah, um, Anthony, Ant, is uh, pushing everything off to a new server, and he put a message up on his his page. Uh, however, I had I already, already messaged him before I read this, saying, hey, what's wrong with your SSL uh, certificate. But anyway, uh, he put this message up 10 days ago, but here it is. I have to copy over the hosting accounts to the new hosting package this weekend or next. So I guess it was not that weekend and it's going to be this weekend, hopefully. It says, it might give an SSL warning for an hour or something until the IP address resolves. I don't know if he's already made that move, if that's the problem with the SSL, uh, or if he is going to already fix that. Um, he says, it's on the same server, just changing account names. Originally, the hosting, uh, he had the hosting on a different domain name, and RLO was a subdomain, so he signed up, uh, signing up the hosting on a new name uh, gives a half-off price, so it's a good deal because... Uh, you know, whatever, it's a good deal, it's half price. So uh, <laughs> so I haven't heard anything back from him yet, but if you're getting that error message as you try to sign into RLO or refresh your page on RLO, uh, I, I would feel safe if I was you, uh, and I did because I'm me. Uh, just go ahead and hit, click the advanced button or whatever and tell it to go ahead and go to the site if you want, if you if you need to get into the site or just want to because uh, it's, it's there, you know, it's cool. Um, I, I think it's, uh, you, you should feel free to go on, go on over to the RLO site and, uh, do that. It's, it's, it's just a little configuration thing as it resolves the host name, IP, SSL, everything's got to line up, you know, so, uh, don't worry about it. Uh, and, and if you're not there now, uh, uh and if you don't want to go ahead and do that and, and accept the certificate as it is and uh, just wait till tomorrow everything will be fine so no big deal no big deal anyway <laughs> so that's that on that um what else we got here <laughs> oh hi and howdy to all the folks out there listening into the various places you may be listening from hopefully you're on real liberty media dot com on the freakers ball show page or maybe possibly on von dot live on slash von dot live slash Real Liberty Media on the video there. If you're watching the video, hopefully you're watching the video. That, that's that's really the way to go for these shows. I, I think, personally. But if you're a, if you're an audio listener, that's cool too. And you could be all kinds of places listening on the audio. And that could be the aforementioned RLO, RealLiberty.org, or FreedomsNetwork.com, or 
reallibertymedia.com, RLM, RLM Radio at XYZ, and a host of other places that you might be tuned in from. So welcome to all you folks out there in all those places, wherever you may be. However, if you are there in the chat room, here in the chat room, on irc.freenode.net, uh, however you may have got here through your own personal IRC client or through the web client there, the Kiwi thing, uh, welcome to y'all. And uh, we do have a, a nice group, of, a wonderful group of folks here this evening uh, with us. We got the Beetle and the Cowboy Tech, of course, Barman, yeah. Well, myself and the Moose Girl are also uh, logged in as per normal. Um, um, anti and Asmodeus, Asmo, the Chalcedony, Miss Gramsci. Uh, do you have a doctor who says, ugh? <laughs> I don't, I, I think he's saying ugh to the links that, uh, Rob Works was posting there in the chat, uh, which is, uh, likely because they are very ugly links about ugly things done by ugly people. Anyway, we got Poopster and Prince who uh, yeah, kind of missed their show last night, but they'll be back next week. Don't you worry. We have the wonderful Miss Kate here with us, as always. Mr. Rob Works, the new Arkansian. How do you say that? Arkansian? I don't know, whatever. And Rome's and Vanna and Vinny, uh, who did his show earlier today. Thank you for that, Vinny. Uh, and he'll be doing another show tomorrow. Vinny's got a new show he's going to start on Saturday evenings at... Uh, 8 p.m. Eastern, I do believe, and uh, his first one is talking about Eat the Babies, uh, some old uh, written piece from the 1700s, as far as I recall him telling me. Uh, so that'll be interesting to check that out here on RLM Radio tomorrow night. We got the Phantom and CC66, Chosura, jo and the lovely Miss Circle. Oh, she's so lovely. Uh, we had Cyborg Doodling. Duh! Duh! <laughs> E-Man, Ensiv, Frumpy, Gromit, JJ's. Hey, JJ's. I still see you posting stuff over there on the Twitter. I don't see you in the chat too often, but I know you're around. Uh, we got Mr. Snick and the Ponder Gender. Pwn Sauce! Yes, the Pwn Sauce, the real Danny Woo. Mr. Sock Puppet down there in Florida. Yes, Mr. Sock Puppet. The spot as... Uh, Holiest Roger and Zip-X. Zip-X, yes. Z-P-P-I-X. There's no, uh... <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so that's all the folks that are here in the chat. Oh, wait, and others and other chats around IRC. Miss Chloe. Do I have to mention your name, Miss Chloe? I don't know if Juan Taco's tuned in or not, but he's out there and around somewhere. You know, hanging out. Hopefully he's tuned in. I always like when Wanda Taco tunes into the show. I wish he'd come back to RLM here, but yeah, you know, whichever. Um, anyway, what else is going on here that I need to talk about? Anything new or exciting? RLM style news? Well, I already mentioned Vinny's new show that's going to start tomorrow night. And um, let's see, anything else? Oh, well, maybe I shouldn't say anything yet. I'm not going to say, well, let's just say there may be another new show coming up soon from somebody you're all very familiar with uh, that may be coming here to RLM Radio. Uh, it's not quite worked out yet, but if it happens, she will be doing a new show. So uh, look forward to that, um, and I'm not going to tell you which particular she that would ruin things, and I don't want to ruin things. I don't want to give you any spoilers. But let's say it should be enjoyable to most people. I would think, anyhow. Uh, so. <laughs> so there may be another new show popping up, and that may be on a Sunday evening. Uh, a Sunday evening, um, not directly after Hal, but maybe a couple hours after Hal. Uh, we'll, we'll have to all see, see how that all works out, and uh, you know, uh, I I I'm, I I'm I'm assisting as I do when new shows come along uh, to help to help uh, guide her along the way to to where she wants to go. 
<laughs> all right, all right, all right. Uh, anything else interesting? Not really. Um, yeah, no, I think that's good. I, I think I'll just go ahead and kick in some jams here um, because, well, that's what I like to do. And as I said, I do not believe the Moose Girl will be tuning in with us tonight. Uh, so, you know, eh, it's, it's just the way it goes. Um, ah, here we are. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, where the hell is my deal? Oh, it's all the way up there? Oh, okay. Great. All right. This is a uh, band. A gal. A band. Sister Sin. Ah, uh, yes, very nice, very nice. That a lovely a young lady there is a gal by the name of Sophie Lloyd. And uh, Sophie, um, yeah, she's, uh, <laughs> she's, she's, she's kind of special. Uh, she, I, I, I refer to her as the female version of Zach Wild, where she is great absolutely excellent on technique and kind of mediocre on style now all the videos that i've seen of her and i've watched quite a few videos of hers uh they're they're all instrumental she, as far as i could tell she doesn't sing and uh, nobody in her band sings um but uh yeah i i enjoy watching her uh she is quite lovely uh anyway sophie lloyd there bulletproof revolver before that we had rob zombie doing feel so numb <laughs> and excellent thing there and kicked it off with Sister Sin fight song a little head banging to get everything going the right direction here on this balls to the freaker wall show <laughs> freaker freakers balls to the wall I don't, know. I don't know how you want to say it um, so yeah <laughs> oh man very, uh, very, very, very good uh, high energy music there to get us kicked off on the program here uh, this evening. Uh, yep, 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 yep. So, yeah, I uh, think it's going to be pretty cool this weekend. Freaky balls, yeah, fre freaky, freaky balls, freaky balls. Tripping balls, man! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> well, whatever, whatever works, whatever works. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, that'll, 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 that'll all be fine. Don't mind me. Sometimes you know when I do, when I do the show by myself, I, it, I, I have to talk to myself a little more than I would uh, if if the moose was here along with me, uh, because uh, well, I just do. <laughs> all right. So hopefully you're all, uh, those of you that, I guess, do the 8 to 5 Monday through Friday thing are happy it's the weekend, right? And I know there's a lot of you. I know there's a lot of you that do that, uh, and I'm not sure who y'all are, but uh, anyway, we're going to kick off some news stories here for you, because that's what I like to do. <laughs> now, both of you know, I, I'm a big fan of monkeys. I enjoy monkeys. I think monkeys are cool. I like monkeys. Um, anyway, so I came across this story today, and I, and I thought, well, that makes perfect sense to me, because I certainly know a lot of people that these monkeys are probably smarter than. <laughs> anyway, posted up on the dailymail.com uh, comes uh, this story of factual hilarity. Because I find it funny because, yeah, like I said, uh, I know a lot of people are not as bright as monkeys. And I think monkeys are overall pretty smart to begin with. So here it is. Monkeys outsmart humans in problem-solving exercise to win food in test of cognitive flexibility. So researchers gave humans and monkeys a touchscreen puzzle to unlock a prize. Humans were much more likely than monkeys to keep trying the old solutions. 
70% of monkeys recognize the new shortcut, shortcut to unlock a prize. So here it is. <laughs> new research shows that monkeys outperform humans in a test meant to measure cognitive flexibility. The, you know, the experiment, conducted by a team of psychology researchers at George State University, pitted humans against capuchin and rhesus macaque monkeys. Both groups were asked to interact with a touchscreen computer that featured four squares with different patterns in them. When subjects pressed on the squares in the right sequence, a triangle would appear in place of one of the squares. When pressed, the triangle would produce a reward. For the monkeys, the reward was a banana pellet, and for humans, it was either a short audio jingle or a, a sign uh, of, of points being tallied up. I don't, I don't know how that's really a reward, but, you know, whatever. It's for humans, so whatever. To test how flexible the parties could be in their cognitive processes, uh, the researchers began to include a triangle on the touchscreen from the beginning. According to uh, a report in Live Science, they found that the monkeys were much more likely to key in on the fact that they could get a reward by just touching the triangle in the beginning. <laughs> Humans. Frickin' humans, man. <laughs> um, anyway, the human subjects, however, insisted on first pressing the squares in the original sequence before getting to the triangle. In all, 70% of the monkeys figured out that they could just press the triangle and skip pressing all the squares. The majority of 60 uh, of 61 percent of human test subjects insisted on going through the rote square sequence before pressing the triangle for the reward. Uh, I think we're less and less surprised when primates outsmart monkeys. I mean, outsmart humans sometimes. Uh, Julie Watzak, the graduate uh, researcher at George State University, said. According to Watsack, there may be both social and evolutionary reasons for the preference for the rote approach to problem solving, meaning humans are easier to brainwash into doing things in a particular way. Uh, people say, well, we've always done it that way. Uh, <laughs> it's interesting to think through ways in which we train our children to think a specific way and stay inside the box and not go outside of it. There are good reasons for why we do what we do, but I think sometimes it can get us into a lot of trouble. <laughs> yes, it can. <laughs> Many different primate species have shown the capacity for advanced and dynamic intelligence. Earlier this year, researchers documented how baboons, macaques, and other old world monkeys were able to combine different call sounds in a way that can, could convey more specific meanings, sometimes that resembled a unique form of speech. I think it more than resembled the unique form of speech. I, I do believe it is a form of speech. Uh, in Sierra Leone, researchers also discovered that chimpanzees were being forced out of the protected areas they had acclimatized to human developments. Uh, in, in a number of ways, including how to cross roads safely and the best times to visit human habitats. So, humans just are not as smart as monkeys in many ways. So, uh, <laughs> stupid fucking humans. <laughs> Outsmarted by their monkey brethren. <laughs> Oh, man. All right, I, I don't usually get to these tech-type stories till the end, but this one's got me kind of laughing a little bit, and, I, and, I, and I, I thought I would share it with you early on in the program, just because, well, I want to. <laughs> it's posted on Gizmodo. I had another story up from another site, and I saw other stories about it in other places. None of them really get to the quite to the key point yet, but, but this one kind of gets a little bit closer. All right. A bug 
lets any fingerprint unlock the Galaxy S10 and Note 10, and Samsung blames phone covers. So I, I know there's people out here, right there in the chat, using these Samsung phones. I don't know if any of them have the S10, because as far as I know, the S10 is like crazily, outrageously priced. But uh, here it is. It's their new thing, their new, their new technology. Um, <laughs> after a British couple discovered that their Galaxy S10 could be unlocked by anyone's fingerprints, Samsung has now provided an official statement explaining the issue and advising the late model Galaxy phone owners on what to do. In short, Samsung advises anyone using the Galaxy S10, S10+, Plus, S10+, Plus 5G, or Note 10, Note 10+, Plus, and uses a silicone phone cover or screen protector should remove that accessory, delete all existing fingerprint info, and re-register their fingerprints without the use of the silicone cover. Okay. Now let me just say this about that. <laughs> when you buy one of these fancy-ass high-dollar cell phones, then you buy these screen protectors to keep the screen from getting mucked up, from getting scratched, from having other, other things done to it. Besides, it also adds a layer of drop protection so you don't crack your screen or whatever because it, it's, it's, it's bouncy. So they want you to remove that cover in order to use their phone with the faulty technology. And then put your fingerprint on there. And then without the that thing on, then only your finger will be able uh, to, to unlock the phone. However, say somebody picks up your phone somewhere along the way. Says, hey, this is a high dollar phone. I'm going to grab this and use it for my own needs. And I want to see what the other person that used to have it, what, what their information is in here. Oh, but I touch it, and I, and I can't get in. But you know what? I have a screen cover, a, 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 a screen protector, a silicone phone cover. Let me put this on there. Boom, I'm in. <laughs> it's so stupid. It's so stupid. Uh, anyway, it says, uh, furthermore, Samsung says Galaxy S10 and Note 10 uh, owners should refrain from using silicone covers or screen protectors until the company can push out an update, which could arrive as early as next week. Once the update is available and installed on affected devices, you'll then want to scan your fingerprint again, making sure your fingerprint, uh, you scan your fingerprint in its entirety. And I've never been a fan of the whole fingerprint scanning uh, way of, of accessing, or any biometrics for that matter, uh, of accessing a device. I, I don't like it. Um, with that fingerprint, that fingerprint, where's that going? It's going probably everywhere you don't want it to be. Uh, and and that, that can be used then against you in some manner, whether it's your fingerprint, an eye print, um, a facial scan, whichever one of these things, the, one, any of these biometrics can be used against you. By Samsung directly? Maybe not. But do you think Samsung doesn't share that information with those people that can do you harm? That do mean you no good? Of course they do. <sighs> According to Samsung's statement, the source of the problem is an issue with the Galaxy S10 Note 10's ultrasonic fingerprint sensor that causes the phone to mistakenly recognize three-dimensional patterns in certain silicone covers and screen protectors themselves that as the user's fingerprint. Do you think before they push out these $800,000 phones, they might want to test those kind of things? That means anyone that uses their phone without the case or uses a plastic or, or glass screen, screen, screen protector should be in the clear 
That said, some users have posted videos like the one above showing it's possible to unlock an S10 by placing a specific kind of gel case on top of the sensor or even even on a phone with freshly registered fingerprints, essentially allowing the gel cases to act as sort of a master key. As I was saying, the unfortunate thing for Samsung is that the ultrasonic in-display fingerprint sensors like the one the Galaxy, in Galaxy S10, are gen generally regarded as being more accurate and secure than optical in-display in fingerprint sensors like the ones used on the OnePlus 7 Pro or 7T. Um, <laughs> at launch, some Galaxy S10 owners complained that the phone's in-display fingerprint sensor was a bit too sensitive which sometimes required users to tap their fingers on the, on the phone's screen multiple times in order to unlock the device. The later prompted Samsung to send out a patch that adjusted the sensitivity of the S10's fingerprint sensor and made unlocking the phone easier, but may also have been partially the cause for this phone's recent issues with the silicone covers. So, remember... If you're really concerned about people hacking into your phone, maintaining a physical security over your gadgets, meaning making sure you never lose sight of it, is still a crucial way to protect yourself. And if you see people walking around with suspicious-looking gel pads, you might, want, you might want to keep an eye on them as well. Uh, the thing is, they, they released a faulty product. Uh, they're, they're not recalling it and... and providing you with new phones with better sensors built in uh, and better software built in. They're going to push out a software patch and say, there you go, good to go, don't worry about it, keep buying our stuff. It's really expensive and overpriced and doesn't quite work as, as we hoped it would and uh, never really tested for. So too bad, so sad, SOL for you. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. Okay. <laughs> hey there, Goob. <laughs> All right. Um, speaking of tracking people, who'd do that? Well, I'll tell you who would do that. Pretty much all of them. All of them people. All of them themers. They. They all want to track you. This article from thecointelegraph.com. Canada is exploring digital currency to track people's spending habits. Yeah. Yeah, there's no problem there, is there? No, of course not. Right. <laughs> the Canadian Central Bank is reportedly considering launching a proprietary digital currency. Digital currency could, could, ha, <laughs> definitely will share info with police and tax authorities. The news outlet The Logic reported that the Bank of Canada is exploring the possible opportunities and challenges related to launching its own digital currency. The central bank purportedly believes that a public central bank digital currency, or as they call it, CBDC, could be the answer to the direct threat that cryptocurrencies apparently present. Now, if you think people that use cryptocurrencies presently are going to switch over to a government tracked, traced, controlled, fiated uh, currency rather than an anonymous cryptocurrency so that you can track and trace them, you're out of your freaking mind. <laughs> the document titled Central Bank Money, The Next Generation. Yeah, it's kind of like Star Trek The Next Generation, only not as entertaining. Was Anyway, the document was prepared by the current governor of the Bank of Canada, Stephen Polaz, 
uh, for a September 2018 board meeting and was presented as a part of a two-year research project on whether or not the bank should launch its own CBDC. On October 17th, an internal source at the Bank of Canada confirmed to Cointelegraph that the presentation did, in fact, happen. The author of the document, Steve Murchison, wrote at the time, We need to innovate to stay in the game. You control the fiat. You really need to innovate? Uh, the CBDC would have all the benefits of a central bank-backed asset. What, what benefits are those? Uh, and all the convenience and security of a wireless electronic payment. Which, uh, yeah, being as what the, what your primary goal there is to track and trace people. I don't think uh, that's uh, all that good. And since you're sharing that data uh, with, with your tax authorities and the police, I, I'm, I, I, I just, you know, I'm missing out on where the benefits come along here. According to the document, one of the benefits of this Canadian central bank of launching its own digital currency would be the ability to collect more information on its citizens. How is that a benefit? I mean, not to the citizens anyway. Uh, of course it's a benefit to the, to the government. But it's certainly the opposite of a benefit to the people. So if people, <laughs> you know, it's better than people using cash, where we can't track everything that's done with those, with those, with those plastic dollars they, they or plastic loonies they use up there in Canada. The personal details wouldn't be shared, they say, with the payee. <laughs> but could be shared with the police and tax authorities. However, in an email to Coin Telegraph, uh, Josian Menard, a spokesman for the central bank, said that the bank had not yet made any decisions as to whether it will launch its own digital coin, adding, Our work on CBDC is exploratory, given technological advancements and the important public service that banknotes provide to Canadians. Um... They're going to do it, let me guarantee you. They are frothing at the mouth, drooling over the idea of being able to track and trace every dime, every penny that you spend on anything, where you're spending it, who you are, what you're doing, and how they can do something bad to you for spending money in a way they don't necessarily approve of. <laughs> and they think this is going to replace... Uh, you know, uh, uh, un, un decentralized cryptocurrencies, anonymous cryptocurrencies. They're out of their mind. Um, so, uh, yeah. No! <laughs> yeah. yeah, no! <laughs> Let me just say, uh, no! <clears throat> no, 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 no. All right. <laughs> Oh, man, I just, uh, but speaking of the Bitcoin, the lovely cryptocurrency that started it all, up to this point, or today, I think it's today, yeah, today, today it would have happened, the 18th million Bitcoin mined was to be mined today, so I assume it was mined today, 18th million Bitcoin. The thing about Bitcoin is there is a hard cap on Bitcoin of how many Bitcoins will ever be produced. And that hard cap is 21 million. So there are now 3 million Bitcoins left to be mined. This is quite interesting to me in the way that, um, because once, once that, that final Bitcoin is mined, it, I'm not sure if it gives the ending date here of when the final Bitcoin is supposed to be mined. Um, let's see here. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see. Estimates 14th of May 2020. Okay. So it, it may be as, as soon as next May that the, that the final Bitcoin uh, will will be um, mined. Or is that just a halving? That, that might just be the, ha the next halving that happens. Uh, which means that you get a, a smaller reward for each block that you actually mine. 
Uh, and it says here it's going to go from 12.5 to 6.25. Okay. Um, so anyway, once the final Bitcoin is mined, what do you think is going to happen with the price of Bitcoin? Not only that, because it's going to, the price of Bitcoin will skyrocket at that point because they will become an unobtainable, some unobtainium, unobtainable commodity. Now, once once that happens, the price will skyrocket on the Bitcoin. The price will go through the, the freaking stratosphere. I was going to say through the roof, but the roof is way too low for what's going to happen to Bitcoin once that final Bitcoin is mined. And it'll start before the final one's done. Uh, of course, that, that, that will happen. But there's also another question to be asked for you crypto coiners out there, crypto miners out there. There's a lot, a lot of hashing power being used right now to mine Bitcoins. So where, and this is a big question, because if anybody could correctly answer this question, they could make a mint on getting into the right spot. Uh, and that spot is, where will the bulk, or, or a large portion anyway, of the Bitcoin miner hashing power go to? What coins, coin and or coins, will that hashing power transfer off to? It, it's going to be very interesting to see, because those coins are, are going to benefit dramatically um, uh, from from all that new hashing power. So it, it may not even be a coin that's ex inexistent yet. Uh, it only remains to be seen. I hope it's not Ethereum. I, I really don't like the whole Ethereum setup, but you know, it, it, it's if it is, it is, and it, it does. It won't probably won't make any difference to me because I don't have the you know that kind of capability to mine uh, in that manner. But uh, it's it's going to be very interesting when when that final Bitcoin is mined um, for. Those two reasons, and probably others that I, I'm not foreseeing yet, but uh, yeah, and even when when the when the, when the block rewards uh, decrease, when they half, uh, which I guess that's what the, the May 14th, 2020 date is about. It doesn't state here when the final Bitcoin should be mined, but uh, getting there, it's getting there, it's getting close, so. <laughs> we'll see we'll see when that all happens it's coming up it's coming up all right now we got to kick off the next tune set here and we are going to do it with a request a double request i don't know when the original request was made i forgot to read that information in my brain but uh it is a double request by the same person so here you go go all the way Yeah, we will be victorious. Yes, indeed. Muse Uprising. Very good stuff there. I uh, like it. That's, that's a great song. Uh, anyway, before that, we had Samantha Fish and Go to Hell. Recorded over there at Don O'Dell's Legends. Good stuff. And, and which, that, by the way, that was a, a, a cowboy tech request. Samantha Fish, Go to Hell. From, oh, last May or so. And uh, the Raspberries. Go all the way. Um, good song, man. I like it, you know, regardless of the fact that they, they say it's, well, what they said about it. Uh, anyway, that's a sock puppet request. And, uh, yes, he requested it. And then he requested it again. And you know what? We played it right here. We, as in me, I guess, since... <laughs> Since the Moose Girl ain't here tonight. All right. <laughs> oh, man. So, uh, Goober says that Rush Limbaugh and Glenn Beck use that song a lot. Well, you know, it's a good song, and it, it, it tells a lot of truth in it. Um, so, and I would be surprised if they didn't use it, actually. And, you know, probably Alex Jones probably also uses it. I, I don't know. I, I don't listen to those people. Not for many years. I haven't listened to Alex. I used to listen to him all the time. Oh, oh, oh. Why, why is this not there? Why is this not there? Now I'm going to have to go and find another copy of it. 
Um, this video is no longer available. All right, yeah, suck my balls. Oh, <laughs> well, there's the moose. I see the moose. See, I thought she was going to be out at the bar. Um, and so I... <laughs> all right, that's all right, moose. No problem. Um, <laughs> I, you know, like I said, I thought... Because I thought, I, you said you, you might not be here. And that was the last I heard, so I figured might not be... Um, Okay, so now you gotta. Okay, so you're not gonna be here. Uh, all right, I, I can't tell. I'm I'm trying to do things. Um. <laughs> oh man, what, 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 let, me, let me see what you're saying. I'm down here in the chat. See, uh, I'm sorry. I have to go work on the garage sale. I'm not even going to the to, to the music tonight. Okay. Um, no, I have to work on the garage sale after all. Okay, that's cool, Moose. Um, Whatever works for you, baby. I, I can handle you whenever, at any time. <laughs> uh, so Moose Girl is, is is doing a garage sale tomorrow, and she's got to work and get things all set up and uh, get 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 every yeah yeah absolutely. Um, so so uh, so she's got to work and get everything set up for that uh, this evening here tonight. So. Uh, she she may call in later, she says. So we'll see. Um, and if she does, cool. And if she doesn't, still cool. Everything's cool. It's all so cool, man. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> oh, man. All right. <laughs> well, it's nice to see you here and around. And like I said, I thought you were going to the, the club to watch your friend. I forget his name. Uh, play, whatever, whatever the band name was. So, uh, yeah. All right. Sawhorses are great. Um, yeah, they, those make great tables if you, if you got some, uh, plywood to stretch across the top. So, yeah, uh, I, I, I like, I like sawhorses for that reason. Okay, okay. So she had planned to go to the club, but uh, now she's staying home. Great. A door. A door works, yeah. Well, any, any flat surface that you can lay across two sawhorses. <laughs> that works great. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Let's get back to some of this crazy uh, news. Of course you are. Well, first off, you're a woman. So, of course, you're allowed to change your mind. But you're also you're a human. So, you're allowed to change your mind because you're a human. Uh, and, and even if you're not a human... Many animals change their minds as well. Like those monkeys I was talking about at the top of the show. They change their mind and outsmart the humans. <laughs> yes. Stupid fucking humans can't figure out a simple ass puzzle and the monkeys can. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> anyway, that's not what I'm talking about right now. We already talked about that. <laughs> but this, you stupid monkeys, and, and and I feel bad comparing monkeys to humans because that's, I mean, it's really an insult to the monkeys. The monkeys are smarter. But, yeah, you damn monkeys, and I'll call you that just because I can. From the Daily Mail, radioactive chlorine gas is still leaking out of Antarctica's ice sheets after nuclear bomb tests in the Pacific Ocean 60 years ago. Yep. Researchers tracked levels of chlorine-36 for decades in two different areas. In one area, it reduced dramatically, but in another, it was still high in 2008. This suggests that the gas is still leaking from stores inside the ice in the Vostok area. Yes, this is what humans do. They poison their planet. <laughs> this is how smart... You don't see monkeys out there poisoning the planet, do you? No, but humans, yeah, they'll go ahead and poison the planet for decades to come. 
Because, well, they're smart, right? Radioactive chlorine is still leaking out of Antarctic's ice sheets after nuclear bomb tests in the 1950s and 60s. A study has discovered a specific type of radioactive chlorine, chlorine-36, in the Vostok area of the icy continent. The scientists who found it say that it got there after being uh, becoming airborne when the United States military tested nuclear weapons in the Pacific Ocean some 60 years ago. It has remained trapped ever since and is still being released into the environment. Although, although, they say, it's not damaging nature in the area. Right. <laughs> sure it's not. <laughs> Researchers from the European Center for Research and Teaching in Geoscientists and the environment in France tested for chlorine-36 in two different areas of Antarctica over a period of decades. In one area, the Talos Dome, they noticed an amount of the radioactive chemical reduced gradually between 1910 and 1980. What do you mean 1910? If they didn't run these tests until 1950... Anyway, by the end of this period, it had, <laughs> it had only four times as much as it would normally be expected. But in a nearby section named Vostok, chlorine-36 levels remained staggeringly high. In 2008, there was still ten times as much there as would be expected naturally. But it's not damaging anything. Believe us! <laughs> The researchers, led by Melanie Baroni, said this indicated that the ice, ice in the area that was continuing to le release radioactive chlorine-36 into the environment around it. Although there are natural sources of the gas, they do not produce this much. The huge quantities produced by the nuclear tests of the 1950s were created when neutrons from the bombs reacted with the chlorine found already found in the seawater. Ms. Baroni said there is no more nuclear chlorine-36 in the global atmosphere. Sure, I believe you, Ms. Baroni. That is why we should observe natural chlorine-36 levels everywhere else. Yeah. <laughs> the chlorine-36 found in the... Oh, I already read that part. Oh, oh, no, I didn't. Uh, the chlorine-36 found in Antarctica got there because the gas became airborne after the bomb tests and was carried across the world by the wind. But it's just there now. It's just there. It's not anywhere else. It's just there. It was carried around the world, but it's just there. Antarctica is so untouched that the radioactive gas has remained there ever since. Like touching it to kind of make it go away? Uh, despite levels of the gas being unusually high, uh, they are not great enough to pose a threat, said Miss Baroni. Said Miss Baloney Baroni. <laughs> oh boy. Hey, Moose. <laughs> hey. What's going on? Hang on a second. All right. All right. Had to switch the headset. Okay. All right. So go on with your story, Grim. <laughs> okay. Um, well, that that's pretty much it. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, that that pretty much covers it. Uh, just well, addi additionally, okay. they said, uh, but they were interesting to study because other types of radioactivity had already returned to pre-bomb levels, while of this course. while this had stayed high. So if you want. So if what I was going to say, though, about Antarctica is my my mom's oldest brother was in the Navy for 20 years. He ended up becoming the chief petty officer. And so he made a career out of the Navy, right? Like, he went in there out of, like before high school even. Like, he was 17 when he went into the Navy. Yeah. And um, he was stationed at McMurrill Station for six months. And... You know, I was a kid when this at this time during this time, so this was like probably late seventies, early like mid seventies. Right. Anyway, and, and so since 
you know, it's frozen down there. It's so fucking cold down there, right? Yeah. So the the army, whatever other militaries have been based in in in, in Antarctica since whenever they started being based there, what they do with their garbage and all their waste is they dumped it into the ocean. So they dumped like barrels of shit, literal shit, like probably human shit, you know, or whatever chemical or whatever, you know, thinking, oh, it's so cold. What could be wrong with this, right? Right. Oh, when you do it for a hundred or sixty years or seventy <laughs> years or however, like you, you you mentioned sixty years in the article there. Yeah. What do you think's gonna fucking happen? Exactly. You think it's just gonna go away? I mean, it doesn't disappear. It, you know, it's sitting down there, even though it's cold as shit. It, that doesn't guarantee anything. Yeah, there, there you go. Currently in Volstock, uh, Antarctica. Uh, minus 51. <laughs> Try McMurdo. It's going to be the same. Uh, yeah, I'm yeah. sure. That, 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 that just says in our so, target. Um. Oh, that's McMurdo Sound, 7 degrees. Oh, yeah, because that's coastal. Right, right. Right, right. right. So it's right on the, the water, yeah. basically. Even though it's cold as fuck there, with seven compared to minus fifty one, there's a huge difference there, obviously. Obviously. Seven's above zero, minus fifty one's below. Yeah, you could so survive blah. you could survive seven degrees, but yes. minus fifty one, no. It's just <laughs> abhorrent that these the waste and the the US military they're fucking assholes, dude. They don't give a fuck about the environment. They do at not. All. They certainly do not. I mean, they would just dump their old tanks, the old helicopters, in fucking shit, whatever, down there. And just yeah. throw the garbage over the fucking into the ocean. Right. Because they had divers, or they took a, put a camera down there or something, and they showed all this crap that's down there. Yeah. Like for six, we're talking sixty years of shit being thrown in there. You know. Oh yeah. It's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. Anyway. Yeah, anyway, um, I found this story. This is from July 15th, 2019, Waking Times. We might have talked about this. I don't know. Okay. Maybe not this exact. We've talked about this subject, but not maybe this exact article. Okay. But it got me thinking because it's called 5G, the global human experiment without consent. Well, okay, and this is from the wakingtimes.com. For one thing, I have a problem with the headline. Because how much shit have they been doing, supposed, you know, without our quote-unquote consent? Like, they do whatever the fuck they want. They don't care what the average person wants or even the majority of people want. Absolutely right. They just do what the fuck they want to do. Yeah. That's why we're being bombarded with this 5G shit. Right. That's why it's going to happen. Sure, sure, sure. You know what's going to happen, Right. Because even though there's bad news, it's bad fucking news. It's happening already. It's not like it's, it's going to... Yeah, it's they're, already they're, happening. They're, they're, it's they've already, already rolled it out in many areas. Was, they've been rolling this out, right. Yeah. So, you know, once again, here we are on the same subject, but it's very important to pay attention to this, I believe, because you got to, you know, there's got to, you got to think of ways you're going to do, what you're going to do to combat this. Because it's it, you're gonna you're gonna be exposed to it. You can't escape yeah, it. I don't, Even if you I don't, don't have a smartphone, yeah, it's not. It, it's still bad news. It, yeah, it okay? don't matter. The towers are everywhere. Right, the towers are everywhere. So you really need to. This is the time to step it up and start taking care of yourself and making sure you you know what you put in your body and what products you're using and everything. Yeah, I, I'm you know, not. It's all I don't, combined. I, I don't really know too much of what you can do. Um, right, because this is what, okay, so in this article it says alarming evidence of harm. And it says more than 10,000 peer-reviewed scientific studies conducted by independent researchers from around the world demonstrate the harmful, harmful biological effects of wireless radiation. Because of their developmental stages, children are much more susceptible. In addition, wireless radiation effects are cumulative putting children at greater risk, meaning it builds up in your system, okay? Right, right. The effects include detrimental effects on fetal and newborn development, detrimental effects on young children, brain tumors and other cancers, DNA damage and altered gene expression, 
neurological effects of cogn cognitive impairment, uh, impaired sperm function and quality, learning, learning and memory deficits, cardiovascular disease, altered metabolism, and more. Okay, so this is not a good thing, people. And everyone's like, oh, well, you know, and, and, you know what? I personally, I have a cell phone, right? Yeah. But I really don't like cell phones. I really fucking don't. For one thing, the cell phone, my cell phone hardly works for me in my house, okay? Like, yeah. the signal, I get one bar, like, in certain parts of my house. So that's why I have a landline. You know, people will call me on a cell phone, and I or on my cell phone, and I answer. I'm in my house. I'm like, I gotta call you back. I gotta use my landline to call you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because it's like, it, it, and the whole charging thing. Okay, you constantly have to charge a goddamn fucking bitch. You know, it's like, <laughs> come on. Yeah. I mean, I get it. You know, it doesn't have a huge battery, and it's small and compact, and it, you know, the battery only has so much charge in it. Whatever. Right. But the older the phone gets, the, the the longer it takes to charge, and the less it holds its charge. Yeah. So then they want to say, "Well, we're rolling out 5G," you know, because they don't they want you to be addicted to these devices. All right. Sure, they do. They do. I mean, when I grew up, we didn't have cell phones. We had pay phones and landlines. Right. You know, we did not have even cordless phones. No. We had corded phones. I mean, my landline, yeah, it's still, you know what I actually need to make it really work, pro unless they shut the network down, I would need a corded phone, because right now I have a I have a cordless phone. Right. So if the power goes out, even my landline's fucked. won't work, right? Oh. Well, don't, yeah, I mean. Because i got to plug it into the wall. You don't, you don't have any old corded phones hanging around? Uh, I think I do somewhere, yeah. I'm going to have to fucking... Next phone I get is not going to be a cordless phone. It will be a cord corded phone. Okay. Yeah, I got a I got you a couple of the old ones hanging yeah. around. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I, as I said, I have, I have a couple of the old corded ones hanging around. Yeah, you know, I mean, this is nothing to mess around with, people. And like we said, even if you have a smartphone or you don't, like you can be like, well, I don't have a smartphone, so I'm all right. No, no, you're not. Because, like Grim <laughs> said, the towers are everywhere. Right, they are, and, and there's one. About a hundred yards outside my window. Right. Anyway, so we're all, you know. So let me let me just no, read. Let me just let me just let me just. I don't know what he's responding to. What? Let, let me just read this part here from your article you posted. Sure. Sure. Planet Earth blanketed in radiation. Yep. The five G agenda is vast. It includes two hundred billion transmitting objects. According to estimates, estimates that will be part of the Internet of Things by 2020, which is like three months away, with one trillion transmitting objects a few years later, 5G is meant to usher in more robotics, artificial intelligence, and autonomous vehicles, including 5G antennas installed inside your cars, behind your heads, and irradiating our brains. So we can talk to people in other vehicles and instruct our driverless cars on where to take us. Five five G base stations and five G devices will have multiple antennas and phased arrays that work together to emit focused steerable laser like beams that track each other. Each five G phone will function like a mini cell tower containing dozens of tiny antennas working wow. working together to track and aim a narrowly focused beam to stretch and connect with the nearest cell antenna. Wow. Uh, the FCC has adopted rules that permit those beams to be as much as 20 watts, which is a lot. Uh, ten, yeah. time, ten times more powerful than, than, than levels allowed on your current phone. So this is going to be everything. It's going to be your freaking toaster, your refrigerator, uh, your doorbells now. They have those uh all every everything has got to have be part of the Internet of Things, um, and so I, I don't care if you have a phone or not. Uh, right, you're it, going to be affected by this. You, you are, powers. unless you go live in a log cabin with no electricity. Exactly, and, 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 and good luck being far enough away from a cell phone tower. I mean, I would say at least a hundred a hundred miles, but good luck finding that. Yeah. So <laughs> they're they're more they're less than a hundred miles apart from each other. 
So you, you, we're, we're, you know, they're blanketing the country with these goddamn things. The whole planet. And there isn't any outrage. The whole That's pl- because people are so addicted. Like there's so, so some people, their cell phones like heroin, dude. Worse than heroin. Oh, I know, I know. Like they freak out if they don't. Their phone doesn't work. Oh, it's yeah, like, yeah. because a lot of people don't have, like, desktops or laptops anymore. They just do everything on their phone. Pe- it's like, pe- you're going to hurt your freaking eyes because it's so fucking small. People sleep sleep with their phones, you know. It's ridiculous. They, it, 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 they, yeah, they, it's, they, it's worse than fucking heroin. They, they put the phones under their freaking pillow, and, and so that things radiate in their brain the whole night. Um <laughs> right. I mean, that's the worst place you can put your cell phone is under your pillow. Or, or they have it, you know. Basically asking for a brain tumor. Uh, I mean, or it'll, it'll just be right there on the on the night table next to their head. You know. Right. People keep like, it there. When I, when, I, when I use my cell phone, like if I bring it up to my room at night, I put it afar. I put it away from me. I do not yeah. put it near me. Like, like right by me. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I, I don't even know and if I that's going to I never put it in it. my pocket. You see these people walking around with it in their pocket. Yeah. It's like, dude, you're wearing your fucking cell phone. That's just not cool, dude. <laughs> stupid. You know? It yeah. Is, it is stupid. Anyway, you remember last week we were talking about vaccines and how the vaccines, yes. uh, how the vaccines infected all these people with whatever disease the vaccine was for, and I think we were talking primarily about polio last week, but uh, also we know that the vaccines infect people with. The measles, they infect them with the flu, they infect them with whatever the, whatever the vaccine is for, that's what people get infected with. And I mentioned at that point in time, just wait until they roll out the Ebola vaccine. Well, yeah, well, know. well, we did not have to wait long. Great. <laughs> well, imagine that. World's first ever Ebola vaccine gets the nod from the European Medicines Agency. Of course it does. <laughs> yes, the European Medicines Agency has recommended that the first, uh, the world's first Ebola vaccine be approved after, listen to this, it's not even approved yet, it's not even approved yet, after it was administered to hundreds of thousands of people in Africa. So it's, wow. not, it's not even approved, and they're just shooting up these African people. Of with course this they are, because, you know, they got those African people fooled, because it's such, it's so third world there, that, and then AIDS was, like, devastating there, which was also per design. And it's just, they believe in these vaccines because they trust, you know, higher-ups or people that have money or government officials, which is ridiculous because it's the same thing. Their governments are corrupt, too. Okay? Uh, uh, Here's my comment that I made on this article over on the Mm -hmm. Twitter. Uh, uh, New York Post posted it. I said, if this works like other vaccines, there's going to be a huge sudden rise in the number of people getting Ebola. (laughs) Yes, there will be. <laughs> it's just like I, yes. I, 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 and, uh, I mean, come on! <laughs> what the hell okay. are they doing? Anyway, so the so the agency on Friday describing licensing the vaccine as an important step toward relieving the burden of this deadly disease. No, it's an important step towards spreading that disease around the world, is what it is. Uh, anyway, the Ebola vaccine was originally developed in Canada and is now marketed by Merck as Irv- Oh, God, they're Irv- fucking evil. Irvibo. Uh So more than, oh se- more than 270,000 people in Africa have received it. It should be called murder. Uh, uh, anyway, a second vaccine is made by Johnson & Johnson, which is not yet oh licensed, God. but will soon be used in parts of Congo where Ebola is more actively spreading. Or is not actively spreading. Also, Friday, the WHO is convening a meeting to consider whether the epidemic in Congo should still be designated a global emergency. Well, of course, they want it to be a global emergency so that they can force that vaccine down your throat. Um, right. And force you to get the Ebola. Yeah. So, <laughs> it's like. Jesus Christ. Yeah, You'd be fucking kidding me, but no, you're not kidding me. Wow. This, this, this is, uh, this is, this is, this is what it is. So, uh, yeah. Wow. 
Wow. I mean, that, it, it's just like you get to a point where you're just like, really? Like, it's crazy. Yeah. Hang on a second. I'm looking for this. All right. I, I got to show anyway. you these. I got I got I got I got I got to show you these things. Let me uh, get this camera over here lined up, but um <laughs> and we may have talked about these before. I don't know, but but this is a this is a new article about it. And um let's see where are we at here. Hey, I found it. Go ahead. Hang on. I'm I'm trying to mm -hmm. Oh, what's that one? Oh, that's that one. I don't want that one. I want this one. Okay. There it is. Okay. Um you see what that thing is there? Yes. Oh, is it on the screen now? Let me see if it's on Wait, the screen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there it is. Yeah, yeah, I see that. Okay. That is a caterpillar. Okay. Okay. <laughs> like a moth caterpillar or something. Uh, yeah, for whatever. Okay. A moth or butterfly, whatever. It's a, it's a venomous pus caterpillar. And what? venomous pus caterpillar. Great. Okay, so these... I think it's an alien thing. So these things have made return to the southeastern states, apparently. I heard about this. Okay. Yep. Um, which includes Florida. So it says, don't, don't be, yeah. <laughs> don't be charmed by their fuzzy appearance. These seemingly harmless caterpillars. Yeah, don't let your kids play with them or grab them or anything. Oh, these, these harm, seemingly harmless caterpillars could poison you. Uh, they are the most venomous in the United States. And they've made wow. the re made their return to several southern states, including Florida. Wow! Uh, here's a, a thing from a woman. She Creepy. Says, I was leaning on a wooden fence and immediately felt my wrist burning. She wrote in a post that has been shared more than thirty nine thousand times. I started screaming for my brother to get it off me. He had no clue what what it was. It felt like fire ants in that moment. I looked down and saw this fuzzy thing moving across the wood. Oh my God! So she went on to explain later that after the EMT cleaned her up, she went uh, on with the later with her day. Later on, she could not breathe and thought she was going to pass out. Uh, the pain had struck again through her chest and all the way up her arm, um, and she had to go to the emergency room. Morphine did not even touch the pain. No, I cried. And, I cried and pleaded for God. For hours to make it stop. Oh, he didn't really do anything, though, did he? Uh, I've had no. two C-sections and other surgeries, and nothing came close to the pain. It, it felt like someone was drilling into my bones. Wow. So, um, if you see these caterpillars... Um, Kill them. Kill it. Just uh, avoid them, I, I guess. Yeah, I, avoid it, or don't even don't touch it with like anything. You know, and, and if you're out... With a stick or something. If you're out somewhere... Um, look around before you start getting comfy somewhere, because if these things yeah. are around, it apparently does not take much for them to transfer their poisons to you. No, apparently not. So, uh... Scary shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, gnarly. gnarly. Yeah, I live in Wisconsin, so it gets really cold here, you know. Those yeah. things are, hopefully can't survive Arctic temperatures. No, I, I, it, it just says southeastern states, so... Okay, good. So, you, you, you know, should, you should but still... Honest. Creepy. Yeah, yeah. Weird. Yeah. Okay, so I found this, and we've talked about this recently for a while. Um, throughout the last couple of years, whatever, I lose track of time. But anyway, this is from October 9th, 2019. Okay. From WBUR 90.9. I don't know where that's out of or anything, but it's on their website. It, it was a, Someone posted this article, and I liked it. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's the the title is how psychedelic substances can help treat anxiety, depression, and other mental illnesses. Great. I mean, seriously, it's been proven. We've talked about this that mushrooms are an aid for depression. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, and it's been proven scientifically for all you naysayers out there, like, oh well, whatever. That's just a bunch of hippie. No. Okay, they've been studying this. It's a real deal. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just saying because this is a fairly, fairly recent article, but an older topic. But still, I'm so glad that this is being put out there. You know what I mean? Right. I'm glad this information, because... 
Yes. Yes. Hello. Hello. Dude, Hello? sorry. When you're depressed or suicidal, the last thing you need is to be more depressed and more suicidal. And from what I can tell, these fucking antidepressants that they put these people on make you more suicidal and slash homicidal. And they're no, the, the, the mainstream media, or mainstream pharma, mainstream media, the mainstream, the big pharma meds are junk. Right. All right? They're junk. Who would you rather trust? The government or uh, motherfucking nature? That's what you got to ask yourself. Who right. do you trust more? The government, which is a thing, but it's made up of these fucking jackasses. Mm-hmm. You know, or Mother Nature. Okay? I oh. trust Mother Nature over the government or man any day. Absolutely, right? yeah. Yeah, so don't be going... To, if, you're, if you're depressed or something, talk to somebody. All right? Someone that you can trust. Some, even, like, a, a stranger. Like, they have hotlines you can call. You know, and they don't know who you are. You don't know... You know what I mean? Yeah. Talk to somebody about this shit. And fucking do not, do not seek out medical help from a mainstream doctor. No. And don't because call me. You'll be, you'll end Tell up me right worse. now. Don't call me. <laughs> right. But I'm just saying. No, I know. Don't trust these fuckers. I know. I know. Don't. I mean, Don't. I can't believe, even now, we've been doing this show, what, 12 fucking years? Yeah. I just still can't believe how gullible people are. I know, but they're not listening to us, so. No, they're not listening to us. The people that need to be aren't. <laughs> right. Listening to the show, you know, and I tell people about this show, and, you know, some people actually listen to a podcast or something, and, then, you know, usually they just be like, they don't say anything. Yeah. Or sometimes they'll be like, oh, you're fucking nuts. Yeah. Which doesn't happen very often because I don't very tell very many people about this show. Right, right. Like, it, that are, I know, mainstream people because they won't get it. Like, when I, sometimes when I'm describing it, I'll be like, yeah, people just don't get me usually. You know what I mean? Because they don't. No, they don't. Because I'm, I'm, I'm coming from a different thing, a foreign point of view to them. Sure. And a lot of people don't aren't open-minded enough to listen or understand. I, I know, I know. We have those and people. And so it's like, I can't waste my time. We we, even know, have, we, just, we have some of those people here in the chat. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you know, so, um, yeah. so you just pick your battles and, you know, I, I, I give out information sporadically of, about my show. Like, if someone's really interested in it and stuff and seems, like, really interested, oh, yeah, that's really cool, that's awesome, you know, blah, blah, blah. What What's the website? Usually I have to be like, do you want the website? Like, we do podcasts. You know, most people are like, they just, like, their eyes glaze over. <laughs> they change the subject. It's like, yeah. okay, not go, not talking about that anymore. You right, know what I mean? Right, right. Yeah, I know, I know. It's weird. Like, okay, whatever, man. Okay, so anyway, back to the vaccine thing. I, I, I have to point out this because this is a perfect example of a total fluff piece and total, you can tell that this news station, my local news station, which is an NBC affiliate, okay, mm -hmm. is totally fucking mainstream media, okay, and totally sure. uh, in with the agenda. Absolutely. And so they glorify cops, and they glorify glorify doctors and nurses, and they glorify government officials. They glorify um, professors at the college. Okay? Right. This is Eau Claire. It's not a major market. It's a medium market. It's not a small market. I'd say it's about a medium market by now. But this piece that they did, WEAU, on mm -hmm. October 16, 2019, is a total fluff piece, dude. And it's it should not have been it should not be on this it should it, it, it's 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 a useless article, okay? Okay. And it's to promote the agenda. So what it, the title of it is nurses shed light on flu miss shot flu shot myths, okay? Uh huh. 
All right, so I'm going to read the whole article because it's a very short, like I said, it's a fluff piece. Okay. It's a bullshit, it, it, it's it's useless article. Local health officials are hoping to shed light on this surrounding the flu vaccine. Registered nurse at HSHS Sacred Heart Hospital in Eau Claire, Lori Van, Van Damme, says there are many misconceptions on the flu vaccine. Some of those are that the vaccine causes other diseases or it can cause strokes. She says the biggest myth is that you can get the flu from the flu vaccine. <laughs> we give that vaccine, this is the quote now, we give that vaccine, your body creates an immune response. So it's your body reacting to the virus. It creates special cells that will recognize that virus. Okay, it creates special cells that will recognize that virus and kill that virus. So that's why you may get a mild fever. When you get the vaccine, you're protecting others in your community, and you're getting protection. She says people who shouldn't get the vaccine are people who have had a severe reaction to the flu vaccine. She says it's otherwise recommended for anyone six months and older. What a piece of shit this article is. Like, okay, how obvious can you fucking be, people? Absolutely. And that gives you no information at all. It's just this lady's opinion. Sure. And they're putting it off like it's fact. Scientific fact. Yeah. No, it's in quotes what she says. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I mean, come on. This is a perfect example of how they get people. Get down, Jackson. Get down. It's, what a ridiculous thing, though. See what I'm see, see what I'm saying? I do. It's 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 just a fluff piece. Sure it is. Trying to get people to go out there and get that goddamn flu shot. It's just a little brainwashing every year. But what? A little, a little bit of brainwashing. Yeah, just a, a little bit. Fuck, it, it, it's total brainwashing. Why? I mean, you it's know. Total, it's total mis, It's <laughs> total propaganda. It's total misinformation. Right. I mean, and it's one person's opinion. Oh, because she's a nurse, so she's an expert now. Right. I'm sorry. I, she's not an expert. She's she's brainwashed because she's a goddamn nurse. Sure. You know? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, so Yeah. Anyway, I get, t- it's like, really, come on. I know, I know, I do too. Anyway, let's play some more music here. Uh, okay, I'm going to run to the garage, so if I'm not back right away, don't worry. All right. I'm just going to go up there and do a couple things, you know. All right. So, all right. I just okay. had to call in because of the fucking Antarctica thing, and I'll, you know. I know, I know. Well, this, right. you know, if, if you'd have heard the earlier stories, you had to call in for those two. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. This is uh, Cream here, their farewell concert, and uh, let me just say, rest in peace, Ginger Baker. Very nice stuff there, let me tell you. uh, It's supposed to be, uh, or or not supposed to be, it's the Walkin' Blues uh, featuring Keb Mo. However, it's from the Song Around the World deal, Playing for Change. Um, all kinds of folks from all over the globe. They're sitting in on Walker Blues there. Yes, indeed. Great, great stuff. Uh, before that, we had Cracker doing Low. I don't know how, y'all, how many of y'all remember that tune. Good stuff there. And we kicked it off with Cream uh, doing Politician from their Farewell Concert. So, uh, yeah, good, good, good jams, man. Good jams. I will say, I shall say, I do say. <laughs> oh man, I just, I just, uh, what happened? What happened there? What happened there? Something didn't happen. Something didn't happen. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes I tell it to do a certain thing, and it, and it, and it just sits there like I didn't do nothing. So, yeah. whatever. <laughs> oh, computers, funny. Funny little critters that they are. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. So you get your Whoops, gr- I muted. You get your get your garage stuff taken care of. Uh, a little bit. I still got stuff to do. Yeah. So it's supposed to rain a little bit in the morning. So if I like do some in the morning, it's not the end of the world. Oh yeah, as long as you get up early. Right, I gotta get up early, so that's the whole thing. I probably should just 
jump off here now, but <laughs> you know, garage, garage sales. They they like the people. Early people like to go there. Yeah, they do. But even if it's mm-hmm. rained, they'll, they'll put a little damper on it. But the hardcore ones don't care. They'll just be out there at eight. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. But I'm hoping to make a few bucks. I mean, if I make fifty bucks, I'll be happy. If if or you know what I mean, whatever I make is fine. All right, I got a story for you out of Wisconsin. All here. right. Ooh. Okay. Ooh, cheese heads. <laughs> yeah, man. All right. So, so there's this uh, school. Does it say which school it is? Um. Oh, I heard about it. I think it's a, it's just a Wisconsin high school. It doesn't. Doesn't necessarily say which one. Anyway, so so so, so the, this guy, he's a he's a. I can't tell if he's a school guard or a janitor because it says. I remember that. Yeah, says, I've heard this one. It yeah. says different things in different places. Anyway, right. so uh, Wisconsin school guard said he was fired for using a racial slur when telling student not to call him that. Right. Says as as a black man, I have a right not to be called oh, that. Yeah called that word he says so uh, a black security guard at a wisconsin yeah. at a wisconsin high school who was fired after he said he repeated a, re- a racial slur while telling a student who called him that word not to, that, not right. to use that word and, and has, oh. fi- has filed a grievance to getting his job back um <laughs> yeah okay so, so here we go i have a follow-up to this drum all right well let me finish here Oh, yeah, sure. uh, it says Madison High School District has yeah, a Madison, pol- not Milwaukee. Okay. Uh, has a policy forbidding employees from saying racial slurs. But Marlon Anderson, forty eight, says he was just trying to defend himself after a disrupt- right. disruptive student unleashed a number of obscenities on him, including that slur. So so he had some crazy ass student there saying, You dumb nigga and he and 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 so and so the, the Security guard says, "Don't call me nigga." And so, because he replied back by by saying what the kid said and, and telling him not to call him that, then then wow. he then he got fired out of the deal. So, wow. Um, yeah, it, it's crazy. It's insane. It's nuts. That is double standard or something. I don't well, even know it, how to define it, that, but yeah, it, it, you know, it doesn't really say. Wow. Um, you know what? what That's happened. bullshit. He says Anderson said the student. Uh, he told the student multiple times, do not call me that. Do not call me that word. And Anderson repeated right. the slur during the confrontation while telling not a uh, teen not to use it. So uh, Yeah, you know, I came down on my kids hard when I, one time, they were very young, and I said, that word is never to be used in this house. <laughs> like, it was like a fluke thing, though. This was back when they were like in sixth grade or something, you know. I don't know, fifth grade. I don't know. Yeah. But anyway, um, apparently they staged a walkout. The, the students staged a walkout in support of the security guard who, who was fired for telling the student not to call him a N word. And share share vows to pay his legal fees if he sues the school district. <laughs> Good. Apparently Cher got involved and she has money, so you know maybe. And if she wants to support this guy, that's awesome. Yeah, it's um, messed up, man. Yeah. That, that's that's just messed up stuff there. But they showed hundreds of protests from the firing of this guy. That people are like, no, all oh, this is bullshit. So this is a to me, this is a good thing, you know. Right. And plus, apparently, the Boys and Girls Club of Dane, Dane County. Announced that they had hired him as a pro- director of program operations. Yeah. They said Marlon Anderson has an amazing track record working with local teens. Our CEO, Michael Johnson, works with Marlon today to solidify a leadership role at Boys and Girls Club of Dane County. So, uh, Dane County is where Madison's at. Right. So, you know, I'm glad that people are supporting this guy because, yeah, this is bullshit, Grant. Yeah, this ab- is, absolutely. This is bullshit. It, it, this is bullshit. It, it's, it's, it's super It's insane. okay for the, ki- the kid to call him that, but not okay for him to say, don't call me, and then say that word. That's ridiculous. Exactly. It, it's nuts. It's just, it, this shit's getting out of fucking control. It is out of it, control, it, yeah. yeah oh. it's, out, it's, it, it's out of control. It's out of control. 
You get you people need to fucking take a fucking chill ax pill or something. I don't fucking know. Uh, maybe you X lax. Clean out that shit out of your system and maybe, you know, you'll see clearer. I don't know, but fucking I... try X lax or something, people. <laughs> something. <laughs> Alright. So so this next story. I I I mean the cops are stupid idiot morons, but yep. I, I don't know if I feel bad for this guy. I don't really feel bad for the guy. So here it is. A man was sentenced to 15 years for cocaine possession. It was powdered milk. What? Right. So here's the story. <laughs> A man pleaded guilty to cocaine possession in Oklahoma, only to withdraw his plea and have his case dismissed after it turned out to be powdered milk. Wow. So Cody Gregg was sentenced to 15 years in prison last week after he pleaded guilty to possession of cocaine with intent to distribute, according to court records. His guilty plea was the result of an August arrest in charge of trafficking illegal drugs. After the lab showed a negative test for drugs, he withdrew his plea, court records show, on Thursday, an Oklahoma County judge approved the request, leading to a dismissal the next day, according to the Oklahoman. Greg, 26, told the judge that the powdered milk was from a food pantry, according to the paper. It said he was riding his bike on August 12th when an officer tried to stop him because he had no rear lights. He pedaled faster, then jumped off his bike and fled. The officers found the white powder in his backpack and... And cited and citing an affidavit. Okay, so yeah. he was he's uh, was released uh, today after being in jail since his arrest in August. So here's my problem with the kid. I guess he's a kid. He's 26 or something. Um, yeah. Why are you pleading guilty? Exactly. Well, what the hell? I know you didn't have cocaine. What the fuck? And so uh, I, I mean, I, like, I can understand. Why would he plead guilty to that? I, I can understand you trying to get away from the cop because cops do bad things to people, right? Uh, and, and so that makes perfect sense to me. Yes. But okay, there you are. You plead guilty to cocaine because possession. Because the cops are very convincing, Grim. They get you in that fucking little room, you know, and they got two on on one. They're holding up this little baggie or whatever. We found this on you. This is cocaine, right? Well, you know what I mean? They fucking intimidate the fuck out of you. I, I know, but you plead guilty to something you didn't do for 15 right. years? I don't, see, this is where, this, you know, yeah, it's bullshit. You, you I wind know. up with a 15-year sentence, and, and then you're only by... Right. Uh, I, and how, how did they even go through this before the stuff was right. even tested? Why did they even go to trial or whatever without proving what that fucking white... Sub, they just assumed. They assumed it was cocaine. They They... they vilify this guy before they even had the substance tested. Right, and I, and I, for whatever, somehow, whatever, man, he uh, decided he was he was going to... Wow. Uh, yeah. I can't get to this article then. I got it in here the other day. Wow. Now, now it's got like a one of those blocking, wow. blocking pages. That I mean, you can't make this shit up. Like, we've tried to do stories from the onion and those go over like a fart in church because people, I mean... The, the real shit's better. You know, the the, the real quote-unquote, you know what I mean? The, the, you can't make this shit up. I mean, it's just fucking ridiculous. Right. It's out of fucking control. Okay. It, it, and people are getting so on their high horses. And, you know, the one thing about the Trump selection, it, I, I believe the main reason they wanted this doofus. Yeah. They picked him is because they want to create keep this racial divide going and the sexist divide and the money money divide going. They want to solidify that, right? You know, and so that's why they needed this. They needed they needed Trump to do this. Okay, well, he, I, he don't give a shit. He, he's a narcissist. He'll say whatever. He'll do whatever. He doesn't think before he speaks or tweets. You know, he's a perfect for keeping the racial. Political and sex, sexual divide, very great. Oh, yeah. You know? Oh, yes. They don't want people united. And I've said this so many times. I've said this for 12 fucking years. Yeah, well... Government perpetuates racism and sexism 
and economicism disparages an econ you know economic status for a reason. They keep these things going it's to keep people divided because they know they're fucking outnumbered and they know that if we all a group of us regardless of political affili affiliation or political stance or non-political stance, or sex, or what gender you are, or what race you are, that if we join together, they're fucking outnumbered. And we can fucking all, all them fuckers. You would hope. All fucking go up there and fucking kick the fuckers out. They're usurpers. They're, they're not following the Constitution for all you patriots out there. You know? Right. Why? Why? Why is this? Why is? Why are? Why is the people allowing this? Why? Excuse me. Why are the people allowing this? Why aren't more pe more people speaking out on Twitter, Facebook? I don't care. To your neighbors, to your coworkers, anybody, talk about it, and don't get all you know high and. That's because most people are brainwashed. They can't reasonably talk about this stuff. Because they're so brainwashed that you know they're it's it's hopeless basically. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, I was well, gonna... you, we got to have a government because you know, and then they can't really give you an answer. That is like, well, we got to have a government because you know, you just have to have one. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, me, that's uh, okay. not a good enough reason for me. I uh, mean, seriously, dude, you're fucked up. You know what I mean? I, I was going to read this article to you, but I oh, can't. I'm sorry, go ahead. But but I can't because they they put up a paywall. Um, oh, how, oh. How, however, however, you only really need the headline to get the story. All right. Police in Ohio can stop a vehicle if the paint color does not match the registration. Excuse me. The justices have okay. ruled. Welcome to the four fucking right people. This is just like Nazi fucking Germany. This is the route we're on. So okay, it, this is the road we're on. If you okay? if you paint your car and it's not the same color, then they can stop you for that. Oh my fucking god! So you're supposed to tell them or ask them for, for permission. Let me guess. You're supposed to get a permit in order to repaint your car a different color. Uh, Excuse uh, me. I guess you have to. This is ridiculous, you guys. You have to tell the DMV you painted your car. Yeah, you know what? Fuck all that shit. They're not my fucking babysitter. They're not my fucking parent. Right. You know, fuck you. Yeah. So anyway, they put up a paywall there on that site. I can't get to the article, but it doesn't That's matter. That. Like I said, all you need is that headline to let you know. Right. That exactly. Screw them, you know. <laughs> you know, it's like, this is out of fucking control. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Oh, and yeah, I get it that you, you know... Leave. Go somewhere else. There's nowhere else to go, dude. Let, let, let's let's take a minute and talk about hemp. All right. I'm All good right. with that. <laughs> We're going to talk two stories on hemp. All right. Because I love hemp. They actually have a hemp plantation here. In I Moriarty. love hemp. I they, love hemp, too. They, they actually have a hemp plantation here in Moriarty now. Oh, sweet. Good. Yeah. So here it is. Good. First, The first story from... Return to now dot net. Okay. Hemp is the new oak. So America's awesome. first hemp wood factory is being built. And this article is actually a little old. It's from April fourteenth, uh, but that's all right. It's it's mm -hmm. still good. Um, and anyway, so now uh, it says hemp wood is twenty percent harder than oak, grows a hundred times as fast and is a sustainable alternative to hardwood, uh, furniture, flooring, and more. So now that it's legal to grow hemp in the U.S., a man who spent the last decade developing hemp hardwood is building a $6 million factory to produce it, the product in mass. Uh, his patented product, called Hemp Wood, is made out of compressed hemp pulp fibers held together with a soy-based glue. While that may sound like a somewhat newfangled practice or version of particle board, it is not. It looks and feels like oak, but it is actually 20% harder uh, than the famous hardwood tree. It also grows 100 times as fast. While it takes an oak tree at least six decades to mature, right. hemp, it takes hemp six months. So, right, exactly. Uh, the good news for oak trees, as they are among the most endangered trees in the planet, yep. 
because of the high demand for solid oak furniture. Yeah. Uh, the, the owner of the uh, company, Fibonacci, Fibonacci, Greg Wilson, hey, he must be a brother of yours, uh, was a pioneer in the bamboo flooring industry before it became legal, before hemp came, became legal. Um, where's that part that I was looking for? You'll find it. Uh, well, no, <laughs> anyway, it's, it's going to be like tons cheaper. Uh, I think it said right. Like, well, well, yeah. I think it's, it's I think, way cheaper. I think it said like one sixth of the price. Right. Um, yeah, so uh so you you're you're paying a lot less, you're you're uh you, you can grow that stuff really fast, it's cool. Um it, and that, that so that's so that's uh, I mean it's just great all around. Wow. Um yeah. And now and then there's this um uh, also from the same the same site return to now dot net. Okay. Cotton might not be king for long. Hemp is making a comeback in Levi's jeans. Oh wow! Okay. So get your Are hemp. They made in the U.S. yet or get not? Get your freaking hemp Levi's. Um, anyway, oh. hemp, it says, <laughs> Levi's is helping the super plant regain its reputation by blending it into its uh, iconic denim. Hemp is one of the most powerful plants in the world, producing twice as much fiber as cotton and using less water and pesticides, and fixing the soil while it's at it. Uh, because of his misunderstood association with marijuana, it's been illegal to grow in the U.S. for over 80 years. But luckily for the people and the planet, Congress finally pulled their head out of their ass on this one tiny issue uh, and passed the Hemp Farming Act uh, in a bill in December, uh, giving American clothing manufacturers a local, more affordable source of hemp fiber. Uh, in an effort to brand itself as more sustainable, Levi's will now be offering jeans made out of 30% hemp, 70% cotton. 100% uh, hemp would be nice. Eh, it's a start. Uh, the company has had some concerns about hemp would be received by consumers who have grown accustomed to the texture of cotton. Uh, hemp is uh, can be a little stiffer than, than linen or uh, standard denim. So Levi's has come up with a way to cottonize the feel of it. So they partnered with a fiber technology specialist to create cottonization process that softens the fiber using very little energy or chemical processing. It makes uh, it, to make it look and feel, more importantly, feel almost indistinguishable from cotton. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay, the, the cannabis analytics firm New Frontier pr predicts. The hemp industry will reach 5.7 billion by next year. Yes. Uh, this is great news for the environment, as hemp plants yield twice as much fiber as cotton per yep. acre. It's just you, common sense, and it's been ignored for so long. It uses, and um, it, uh, it makes the strongest rope. That's it, why farmers were forced to grow it during World War II and everything. It uses one. They needed it. Uses one the tenth. One, it uses one tenth of the water. So. Yes. Hello. And it one tenth of the water. And it removes toxins from the soil. Hello. So, <laughs> removes toxins from the soil. Yeah. So yeah, I, I mean, and uh, every time I get a chance, any time I see some people saying crap about plastic uh, on on the on the Twitter, I, I make sure I put in there switch to hemp plastic um, because right, you know, freaking a man. Yeah. So, no doubt. At yeah. least hemp's biodegradable. God Regular right. plastic is not. God damn right. All, All right, right. We're going to play, play another quick set here. All right. But, Grim, i got to jump off here. Like, I'm going to say goodbye now. Okay, that's cool. Just because i got to do stuff, and I just don't want to have to run back here and be worried about, you know, dead air or something. You know? All right. No, that's cool. That's cool. All right. All right. Well, then, uh, have fun preparing and have a good sale I will. in the morning. I will. Uh, yep. My goal is 50 bucks. If I make more than that, woohoo! Woohoo! <laughs> All right, then. Have a good uh, one, everyone. Have a kick ass weekend. Th thanks for jumping Peace. on. Th thanks for jumping yep. on with me. You're All welcome. Right. All right. Talk to you later. All right. This first track is a request by somebody who has the initials CT. All right. Caught me napping there a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Sleep at the switch. Oh, man. <laughs>
Anyway, that was a, a Busco request there. Mance Lips, Lim, Lipscomb. And I have a lip problem. Uh, Mance Lipscomb was doing Going Down Slow. Uh, before that, we had Joe Bonamassa with Slow Gin at uh, the Guitar Center, Guitar Center's Battle of the Blues back in 2012. It kicked it off with the Cowboy Tech request there. The Highwayman doing Highwayman. And now, if, if I am if I am uh, not mistaken here, the Highwaymen are uh, Willie Nelson, Chris Christopherson, Waylon Jennings, and uh, Johnny Cash. And uh, that's a cool tune there, though. The Highwaymen for you all. <laughs> yes, Joey motherfucking B. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> So uh, yeah, it's uh, that's 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 a, that's 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 a lot of country in one in one in, in one uh, track. So uh, a, a lot of, a lot of country legends, I should say, in one track. I don't know if Chris Christopherson's really a country legend, um, but uh, he's a guy. <laughs> he he wrote a lot of songs. I don't, I don't know really, uh, if he if he was uh, very good or not, but uh, yeah, that's him. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> so, yeah, he wrote a lot of songs. I just, you know, I, I I didn't really care for his voice or whatever else he happened to do. Um, so yeah, whatever. Crinkly blue eyes, huh? All right, all right. If you say so. If you say so, I believe you. Oh, man. <laughs> Which one do I want here? This is a t always a tough choice, you know. Let me get down to the end here. Um, that's all right. Well, we'll do this one. It's, 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 always, it's, it's, always, it's always tough to pick. Let's see. So we got here uh, three, eight... Uh, 12, 12, uh, 14. Okay. 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 Well, we don't actually need that tab. Um, <laughs> so I got like, I got like six minutes. All right. Oh, I should have cleared that one. All right. Okay. I'm going to share this article with you. Now, this article is 100% total BS. Total BS. But I'm going to share it with you. Because, what the fuck? What the fuck are these people thinking? I don't know. It's posted on the New York Post uh, here, just uh, 14th, which was Monday. Okay? And you could give me your view about the matter, but I'm telling you, total BS. Why detoxing is a load of BS, is what they say. The doctors are saying, why detoxing is a load of BS. It says the only thing you're cleansing is your wallet. Detox is the hottest word in the woo-woo universe right now. Fancy teas, juices, beauty products, and treatments that claim to purify the body are everywhere. From Instagram to the beauty counter to health food stores. According to Grandview Research, the global detox product market was valued at $50.92 billion in 2018. Too bad, it's all bogus. Well, it's not all bogus. There's a lot of bogus products out there, that's for sure. But detoxing is not bogus in any way, any, any stretch of the imagination. The article goes on to say, Your liver and kidneys are the best detox systems known to humans. True, but they need help, especially with all the heavy metals uh, that are being injected into everything you eat, all of the poisons, all the uh, various other toxins and other things. You need detox products, uh, certain uh, detoxifiers for your body. Now you don't you don't want to get the ones that that you see listed on places like Facebook, uh, but you do want to use detox products. 
Uh, and, and those can be teas. Those can be turmeric. Those can be ginger. Those can be a lot of things. But this is absolute freaking nonsense to call detoxing BS. Why do they want, why are doctors saying detoxing is bad? Because when you detox, you make your body healthy. And if you make your body healthy, the doctor, you don't need those doctors. Of course, you don't need the doctors anyway. But <laughs> that's their story. That's their line. It is absolute crap that they put an article out like this. This is just bullshit. Uh, so they, they're calling detoxing bullshit. Well, they are bullshit. Uh, that that is that is the thing about that. Uh, of course, yeah, you do you do want to be careful. If you hear Alex Jones advertising something, you probably don't want that either. Um, <laughs> but uh, and, and, and you know they they put this crap out there. I just uh, all right. We'll close out with this next one here. <laughs> Because I forget who posted it, but I, but I love it. <laughs> this is this is from the NZ Herald. Co. NZ down there in New Zealand. <laughs> Hipster allergy surcharge. <laughs> yeah. Hipster allergy surcharge. Uh, Customers divided over Auckland restaurant's controversial charge. So here it is. An Auckland restaurant has divided uh, has divided opinion after it jokingly introduced a five dollar hipster allergy surcharge to its menu. Images of popular Indian restaurant Sataya Chai Lounge menu were posted online, highlighting what items on the menu might be suitable for those with spe specified dietary needs. But alongside the vegan and gluten-free option is a $5 surcharge for hipster allergies. The menu reads, please let us know if you have any allergies or dietary needs. Uh, we will do our best to look after you, but we cannot guarantee traces of allergens will not be there. $5 surcharge for hipster allergies. Uh, v can be made for vegan, GF for gluten-free. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so it, it's hilarious to me. It's it, it's a joke. You know, he's not going to charge you five bucks for being a stupid dip, dip, hipster douchebag. <laughs> oh, anyway, let's do the last set here. Oh, I always like to close it out on a little laugh there. <laughs> That's just. Uh, but he should. He should charge the hipster douchebags an extra five bucks just for being annoying. Anyway, uh, uh, this is a, a song about Donald Trump. <laughs> ah, yeah, that's nice stuff there. Larkin Poe doing uh, Black Betty out there at Pace Studios uh, a couple of years ago. Um, <laughs> they, they do it. That's, that's such a nice version of the song, man. Uh, those chicks are crazy. Uh, anyway, before that, we had uh, Leo Maraccioli covering Green Day's American Idiot. That video just came out today. Uh, prior to that, a NCIV request. Yes, Mr. NCIV, uh, right here in uh, the RLM chat and dog going chat. Uh, do a, he requested John LeJoy doing fuck everything. And we kicked it off there with a uh, song, a message to Donald Trump. Uh, Napoleon the Fourteenth, kid doing, they're coming to take me away. Ha ha! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Donald, they are coming to take you away. Soon. I'm pretty sure soon. Because you're nuts! <laughs> All right. Anyway, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. I appreciate you tuning in, being here with uh, me and the Moose Girl tonight on the Freakers Ball. I will be back in uh, Moose Girl, and I will both be back next week. And it's going to be our Halloween show. So if you have any favorite Halloween songs, make requests this week. We get those requests in for the Halloween show next week. 
It'll be great. It'll be fun times. Um, now, tomorrow you got the dork table at noon Eastern uh, with Flash and hopefully with Grammy, too, as well. Too, as well. <laughs> no redundancy there. Anyway, <laughs> and then um, uh, on uh, on uh, uh, later on that evening, 6 p.m. Eastern, I do believe, uh, will be uh, Vincent Easley's new show, and, and it's called... Um, Dang, it's his new show. I don't know what it's called, but he's going to be doing a thing about Eat the Babies, uh, an old an old document from the 1700s. So check him out tomorrow evening. That's a brand new show. And then I'll be on at my normal time on Sunday at noon Eastern with the Blues, and we'll be playing trivia here in the chat, having a good old time, partying it down. Hal Anthony follows me at uh, 3 p.m. Eastern, doing Behind the Woodshed, opening up the big old can of a whoop ass. So uh, check him out for sure. I'll be back Monday night with the Grim Leftovers program at 7 p.m. Eastern. Check the schedule on reallibertymedia.com for all the rest of the shows. And keep an eye on it because that may be changing. We may be getting new shows. All right. Talk to you all later. Have a great night, a great weekend. Peace.